Hi everyone and welcome to the next edition of the vlog. Today we're talking about the actual half marathon race day and what you can expect. Sorry if my eyes wandered to the screen to my right um, a couple of times. I've got a script here which I'm gonna glance at a few times. Uh, I've prepared that so hopefully I don't babble too much today. Um, so, the race. The Torbay Bay Half Marathon is a two lap race that's run between Paynton and Torquay. Um, it starts with a lap of paint and green which is about one mile around, nice and flat. And it takes in the seaside on the way through to Torquay and back. Um, it's largely flat, there's a couple of climbs. There's a climb for those of you who know Torquay at Livermead on the return leg of each lap which is a bit of a challenge. That's the only uh, time and that should really uh, trouble you other than a, a couple of climbs in Preston and Corbin Head which aren't too troubling. Um, there are lots of people starting at the start of the course uh, on the green and you line the course throughout so the, the support is very good which helps to drag you through the race. Uh, there are frequent water stops on the route. Um, I'd advise that you take on a little bit of water at each stop rather than take a bottle and take massive swigs and weigh yourself down. Being weighed down with water when you're on that kind of run is, uh, is not particularly pleasant, uh, having all that water in your belly. Um, so little and often is the best approach I would say. Don't take anything like orange juice uh, if you like my advice because uh, you'll get possibly a bit of acid reflux which is quite an uncomfortable thing when you're running. Um, by all means have some sugar before, um, maybe take uh, energy gels or something like that if that's the kind of thing that works for you but stay away from the orange juice. Um, the race itself is reasonably priced, um, I think I paid around £24. And the camaraderie in the race is good, just like any other big event like that really. Um, you know, if you, if you slow down and stop, people will help you through and people will make sure you're okay. Um, the race numbers that you receive in the post actually hold your timing chips. So they're disposable race, uh, race timing chips, which is great. When you do the Torbay 10k, you have um, a little bit that you tie into your lace. And some places have ankle strips which when you stop the race you have to wait in line to have them removed and it's all a bit of a pain. Um, the disposable numbers are great, the, relying, uh, the timing system is very reliable so that works out well. Excuse me while I refer to my script. If you're a runner who needs to listen to music or likes to listen to music when you run there is no headphones rule on the course. Um, there's a bit of dispute about this one if, uh, if I've been reading on Facebook right some people don't quite understand why. I think it's because it's a two lap race and um, it's well marshalled and the marshals on bikes uh, follow some of the runners round and where the elite runners need to go through the back markers, uh, sometimes the back markers can be oblivious um, if they've got their headphones in and the elite runners obviously want to post a good time which is fair. Uh, some of us can put our headphones in very quietly and listen to the music and not be distracted and still be aware. Sadly it's always the person you need to move who's completely oblivious and unreachable so for that reason there is no headphones or iPods and stuff on the course. Um, there was a little bit of live music last year um, at Corbin Head and if I'm right in understanding this time that's an actual proper feature of the race. There is some live music dotted around the course, I'm not sure of the details of that. So that should be enough to pull you through as well as the crowd support. Lots of people are cheering. Uh, I found last year I didn't miss the music because that, that crowd support really um, is what you want to hear and get you through. I did notice um, at the recent Plymouth Half Marathon this year, about a month or so ago, that a lot of people had their race, uh, well, their race numbers, their, their names uh, ironed onto their shirts. And uh, when me and my partner were watching, I was yelling out the names and cheering, and most people seem to appreciate that. I think that's, that's why they do it, so people can yell out their names, they can get a bit, a bit of a boost. So I'll be doing that this year round, and that may be a good idea for you. Um, the goodies that you receive at the Torbay Half Marathon are good quality. Uh, you'll receive a technical t-shirt. Uh, last year was a nice blue colour with the sponsors on the back of the shirt and the logo on the front. Um, and it's, it's a good quality one, like I say, I've, I've used it several times since. Um, so that's definitely not a token item, you, you will get some use out of that. You get a good solid medal uh, with a nice, uh, nice design, nice and shiny. Uh, well, yeah, well designed. Um, it's definitely the best of the medals I've received from any of these events. Um, so that one's definitely worth keeping. You can also get a race picture from the race partners, photo-fit.net, photo the, the actual address. Um, 
when you when they put their pictures up online, you can go into your race number and they'll be able to to find that picture and you can order one. Um, it's probably cost more than ten pounds. I haven't done it since last year's half marathon, but if it's your first, you might want to do it. It probably works out cheaper to get a friend to take a picture and uh, with a decent camera and, and do it yourself that way if you're going to run often. But for the one-off, it's a great little souvenir. It's uh, got a, it's a proper picture taken with a decent camera and it's the Torbay half marathon logo and your finishing time on there because they work in association with the, the race timing. As you cross the line, you will um, you'll be able to get a free bit of fruit and a cup of water, um, which is probably a good thing. Uh, you will need to replenish yourself unless you're superhuman and you can do these things without breaking a sweat. And uh, they do have uh, massage, free massage uh, provided. Uh, they do ask, you know, for a voluntary donation possibly. So that would be nice if you could help them out, the people who do that. Now, uh, before the race, before the race, the local pub opens up its uh, toilets. Um, it can get a bit crowded and parking as well is a nightmare and the race starts at nine. So I would recommend uh, hydrating early, getting yourself there early to park, getting your toilet out of the way early because it can be a little bit mental um, with so many. I mean, there's there'll be probably around 2000 runners, uh, many of whom want to sort themselves out before the race. So, you know, be prepared. There's a fun run as well on the front. Uh, it's a one lap of paint and green flat, which is about a mile. So if you're there watching the half marathon, you're going to be there for an hour and a half, two hours for the average runner. Uh, if you've got kids or a family with you, you can participate in that. So they, uh, they think of uh, the rest of the family there, which is great. The last thing of interest I should mention is that like in most of these events, uh, they're run in association with a number of charities. I've got a list here. Um, the charities that uh, the Torbay Half Marathon chooses to support are the Rowcroft Hospice, Wallace and Gromit's Grand Appeal, Help for Heroes, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, the Make-A-Wish Foundation and the Torbay Holiday Helpers Network. Try saying that five times fast. Um, I believe some of your entry fee may go into supporting these charities, but also, of course, many runners choose to support their own charities. For instance, last year I ran for the NSPCC I uh, only had a few weeks to collect money as I, I entered last minute, but we did about £200 including gift aid for them in the end, me and my partner helping me fundraise, uh, which is great. Uh, and, you know, it, it provides an extra motivation, I think, running for charity. I haven't... I won't be uh, doing this one for charity because I've done a number for charity since and I can't keep asking people to dig in their pockets too much. But if you haven't done an event for a while uh, to raise money for charity, it'd be a great way to motivate yourself and a great way to combine it with a good cause. So if you're not sure of, of how to set a page up, it's pretty easy. You can go to justgiving.com, make an account and set up a page for pretty much any charity of your choice. You can set up text giving there as well. So, you know, if you need another reason to get out, choose a charity and go and do that. That's about all I can tell you about the Torbay Half Marathon for now. The next vlog is going to be about gear. Uh, probably not much interesting information for elite runners. I don't wear the tiny little shorts or the spikes or anything like that. But for newbies or average runners like me, uh, you may find it useful. I'll be talking a little bit about shoes, tops, shorts, uh, socks as well. That's an important bit of gear I've found. Uh, and bits and bobs like that. So hopefully, hopefully see you next time. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed listening today. Thank you very much.